This use update is brought to you by Grab somebody and tell them hello It's Friday, September 4th, and this is the Barbados Today Evening Update. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. Thanks for joining us. Commissions of inquiry are in Barbados to stay. So says veteran attorney and jurist Sir Richard Cheltenham, who argued the topic to a group of attorneys at the 10th Annual Lloyd Barnett Lecture. Sir Richard says such inquiries are a means of putting to rest public complaints and suspicions concerning the management of government agencies. And he says not only will it remain a permanent fixture, but are likely to increase over time. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid that the Commission of Inquiry as a policy fashioning instrument is here to stay. I am convinced that we will see them being established on an increasing basis and with the sole purpose of helping to create and broaden policy options across a wide area of social, political, and economic activity. They are likely to remain a part of the fabric of modern government, and for good reason. And I am so persuaded. Overall numbers at the University of the West Indies may be down, but the Center for Resource Management and Environmental Studies is singing a different tune. Although enrollment of, at the research center is not in the hundreds, director Dr. Adrian Cashman says he is pleased with the more than 50% increase. Sermis now has 15 students pursuing postgraduate programs this year compared to the nine students last year. We are looking at, at an intake into the Sermes postgraduate program this year of 15 students. Uh, that is an increase from last year of nine students. Uh, obviously, from my point of view as director, I would like to see that number up around 20 um, because it's good for us in that it, it promotes the, the, the group dynamic, the learning between the students and with, with the academics and the other staff as well. So I'd like to see it even more. What are we doing? What have we been doing? We've realized we need to get our name out there. We need to, we've realized that we need to, to alert people to the benefit of coming to university, of a postgraduate of study, course of studies. So we have, over the last year, tried fairly aggressively to use new social media to publicize what we're doing. At the same time, the president of the Guild of Students at Kville says tuition fees continues to be of serious concern. I think this year we may be, we're not maybe hearing as much grumbling or as much commentary about it this year as, as maybe we did last year. But I think the, the effect is there. We can see from the, 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 the reduction in enrollment. I think a lot of it is that the students, you know, uh, would-be students, prospective students, are no longer attending the university, hence the fall off in numbers. You know, they may be there grumbling silently, but I think a lot of them have, have resolved themselves that, they, that this year they're probably waiting another year or two, or probably taking a year off before coming back or before uh, embarking on the task of, of a university education. And that, of course, is a concern for us because, you know, education is, is, is one clear way to upward mobility and social mobility in this life, and it's something that, that we always encourage in terms of upliftment of our population. So it remains a concern for the Guild of Students. That was Guild President Delano D'Souza. Meanwhile, UWE officials at the Open Campus are making special arrangements for the students on site in Dominica. Director of Sites of the Open Campus, Dr. Francis Savre, explained that while most of the courses are online and the site was not affected, they are concerned about the more than 100 new students who are not familiar with the system. We are online, uh -huh. and you know the power, you know the, the internet connectivity, and, and so on would have been affected. So even where power has returned, you may not necessarily have the internet connectivity returning. You know, so so that that of course would be a major constraint for students. So we have been working um, feverishly 
in, in counseling our students in, in that regard, advising them um, whether they should defer to, you know, the, because the good thing about us is that they could begin in January, you know, 2016. Businesses along Tweeside Road and its environs will have to brace for disruptions. That's because the Barbados Water Authority's Mains Lane project, which started in Roebuck Street last month, is moving to that area in another two weeks. According to project engineer Shelley Paris, the existing 14-inch main in Tweeside will be replaced with a 16-inch high-density polythene water main. She advised the businesses to start storing water while project coordinator Roger Gill, the general manager of Infra, said there will be diversions on Tweeside Road, which will only be opened to one-way traffic into Bridgetown. While business owners understand the need for the project, they are hoping for minimal disruptions. To the world of sports, two Barbadian cricketers are at the helm of the West Indies team. Jason Holder has been appointed captain and Craig Brafwit his deputy for next month's tour of Sri Lanka. Head of the WICB selectors, Clive Lloyd, says Holder, who is also captain of the one-day international team, has the qualities to take the team forward, and they are confident he will bring a new dynamism to the team. Full squad reads Jason Holder captain, Craig Brafwit, vice captain, Devendra Bishu, Jermaine Blackwood, Carlos Brafwit, Darren Bravo, Ravenger Chandrika, Shane Darwich, Shannon Gabriel, Shea Hope, Dennis Ramdin, Kima Roach, Marlon Samuels, Jerome Taylor, and Jomel Warrican. There are also changes to the women's lineup. Jamaican Stephanie Taylor is the new captain of the West Indies women's team, while Barbadian Sharika Selman takes the number two post. Taylor succeeds Marisa Aguilera. Head of WICB selectors Clive Lloyd says while Taylor performed well, it's time for a new leader. And the selection panel is confident that Stephanie Taylor can take the team to the next level. The women's team is now gearing up for next month's home series against Pakistan women. The full squad, Stephanie Taylor, captain, Sharika Selman, vice captain, Marissa Aguilera, Shermin Campbell, Shamila Connell, Brittany Cooper, Deandra Dotton, Afi Fletcher, Stacey Ann King, Kaisia Knight, Kaishana Knight, Haley Matthews, Anissa Mohammed, Shandina Nation, Shaquana Quinton, Karisha Ramharak, Tremaine Smart, and Vanessa Watts. There's regional and international news after this short break. Secure your future, be financially strong. On the regional scene, Dominican authorities are investigating reports that two bodies have been sighted in Guadeloupe waters. Chief of Police Daniel Carbon says they are following up on the report, even as he disclosed that bodies have also been seen in Petit Savan, one of the areas hardest hit by Tropical Storm Erica. Carbon says 11 bodies have been recovered so far, while 22 people are feared dead. Meanwhile, CARICOM Secretary Ambassador Erwin LaRock assures the battered island that the Caribbean is standing with Dominica. LaRock, a Dominican national, says the region will continue to provide all necessary assistance. Ordinary persons in the streets throughout the region, um, you know, call and ask how can we assist, what can we do. So there's a tremendous, tremendous amount of outpouring. So as I said, I'm here to see what I can assist. Um, the government of Guyana, before I left, um, 
uh, has asked me to inform UPM that um, they'll be doing a consignment of rice to Dominica next week. And um, we'll be waiting when I get back to see what is very specific needs uh, you have. Um, they're also willing to offer military personnel uh, if, just, if that is needed. And um, the private sector of Guyana has come forward, and the private sector of Trinidad and Tobago, um, Barbados, they're also coming forward and wanting to know how they can assist. So I'm basically here to lend support, um, both in my own capacity as a son of the soil, but also in my capacity as Secretary General and the international contacts, regional contacts, which I can bring to be on this effort. On the international front, British Prime Minister David Cameron announced his plans to allow more Syrian refugees to resettle in the United Kingdom in response to the worsening humanitarian crisis. No figure has been decided, but the Prime Minister said the extra refugees would come from camps bordering Syria, not from among those already in Europe. Britain, he says, will act with head and heart to help those most in need. Britain has a moral responsibility to help refugees as we have done throughout our history. We're already providing sanctuary and we will continue to do so. As the second largest bilateral donor to the crisis, we have provided over 900 million pounds in aid to help those affected in Syria and the region. We've funded shelter, food, water, vital medical supplies for millions of desperate refugees fleeing the conflict and helping them to survive in the countries around Syria, like Jordan and Lebanon. No European country has done more than Britain in this regard. Were it not for that massive aid, the numbers making the perilous journey to Europe today would be even higher. Now, we've already accepted around 5,000 Syrians, and we've introduced a specific resettlement scheme <coughs> alongside those we already have to help those Syrian refugees particularly at risk. As I said earlier this week, we would accept thousands more under these existing schemes, and we keep them under review. And given the scale of the crisis and the suffering of people, today I can announce that we will do more, providing resettlement for thousands more Syrian refugees. And that's news and sports. But for the very latest, all day, every day, log on to www.bobbylistoday.bb. Subscribe to our e-paper, our email updates, and like us on Facebook. Also catch us on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals or Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations in near you, as well as Channel 101 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. Have a wonderful but safe weekend.